Hello! Uh, right off the bat, I'm just going to say that if you want to watch a shorter version of this video with cool music and stuff, then there is a link in the description and at the end of this video uh, for you to click on. Uh, the on-screen link at the end will work on mobile devices, but because of the fact that I'm part of YouTube's end screen cards, I'm doing like the air quote sign uh, beta program thing, I can't put an annotation on screen like now to take you there. Uh, but I hope it won't be too inconvenient to use the description link instead, or indeed the link at the end of this video. So the music video is in the same style as my traditional videos, you know, sort of music with white text and things like that, but the problem with this video was the fact that the music used in it meant that it was blocked on certain devices and in certain places and not everyone will be able to watch it, so I'm releasing it alongside this video here, which is available to everyone because my commentary is not copyrighted um, yet. <laughs> Anywho, this is the latest SSTO in my Phantom line of space planes, and it is the second specifically designed for landing on the Mun, though I imagine it could do Juno without too much modification as well, and obviously by if it can do Mun then it could obviously do things like Gilly. But I'm especially proud of like how easy it is to fly. No power dives would be necessary, and it pretty much flies itself to be honest. Um, you can pretty much hold it at 20 degrees and it will just happily climb its way up, but once you get to about, sort of here I am, 75 kilometers ish uh, you want to start flattening out, I like to do this by just spamming the F button and letting the, uh, the plane gradually pitch down because you want to get your speed up to above 400 meters per second which is the speed at which the rape is really kick in. As a side note, I think the heat tolerance of the Mark II cockpit has been buffed because we'll be hitting speeds that would normally cause it to overheat and explode but this aircraft is able to blast its way to high speeds without building up any significant heat it would seem. And then once we reach about 20 kilometers, I like to just fire up the nuclear engines, but it doesn't really matter too much when you choose to do that. The important thing is to really try and build up as much speed on the air-breathing rapier since they're the most uh, fuel-efficient engine on this craft, basically far more efficient than the nukes. And once the, the rapier is engaged close cycle mode, we're going to want to point ourselves up fairly aggressively, sort of between 30 and 40 degrees. No steeper than that though, because then we'll be creating too much drag um, and it will sort of negate how much height we're gaining because there'll be lots of air smacking against the base of the aircraft. Uh, you want to try and get your apoapsis to about 65 kilometers ish when the rapiers flame out and then the nukes are able to sort of raise it. Keep raising it up to about 80 and then you have enough leeway to circularize. Uh, now obviously I've been kind of rushing this part of the video but uh, if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to sort of fly SSTOs then I would point you in the direction of my minimus training SSTO video in which I it's basically aimed at complete beginners to SSTOs and it gives you a little uh, instructional tutorial on how to build and fly an SSTO that can land on minimus and back and that can carry six kerbals easily it has more fuel than it needs so you have lots of wiggle room to go wrong this just barely has enough fuel to com complete its mission so this is this isn't really great for beginners this uh, space plane but it is quite good I guess if you want to just practice uh, flying space planes. But here we are just circularizing ourselves and getting ready to make a maneuver node for the mum. Now before the inevitable comment saying that it's pronounced moon due to the umlaut above the U, you know the two dots you sometimes see the name written with, this is wrong. A brief history lesson time. After the mum was implemented many fans began calling it the moon as in you know spelling it with the umlaut believing the original spelling to be a mistake. However, several of the game's developers have been heard referring to it as the Mun. Now, kind of the weird thing is that in the title screen featuring the crass lander that resembles, you know, the upper stage of Kerbal X, you can clearly see the words moon or bust as in, you know, Mun spelt with the umlaut scrawled on the side. Uh, so I guess both spellings are generally accepted. However, everywhere else in the game, it's spelled M-U-N. You know, the map screen, the science center, they all write it as Mun, despite the fact that the game does support non-English letters. So, yes, it is a centre of controversy, but the official, you know, air quote spelling in all but one area of the game is M-U-N, which would be pronounced Mun. Kind of like how the sun is often called Kerbal by fans, even though in the game it's only ever referred to as the sun. Anyway, what's cool about this particular space plane is that I removed the four-seat crew module that the Phantom line normally has, with the exception of Lay Phantom, and added a cargo bay behind the main cockpit. Contained within lies a pretty sweet rover and a monopropellant engine to help lift the nose of the plane off during takeoff on the MUN since there is no atmosphere for the wings to generate any lift from. I don't actually have any specific monopropellant tanks on this craft because the Mark II cockpit has 15 units of monopropellant already built in and that's more than enough for what we need it for. <coughs> Okay, so we on. <coughs> oh, we are now on a flyby trajectory of the man, uh, so we can just set up a maneuver node to circularize. Not, not much more to say about that really. I'm just going to assume. Uh, for your benefit that you kind of already know how to get to the Mun uh, and you kind of know how to circularize an orbit 
Um, but you should really have a good grasp of rockets and things before attempting any kind of SSTO mission because they are exponentially more difficult than rockets. So, you know, just, but here we are, just circularizing. I use maneuver nodes for all this sort of thing, just so. Um, for those that weren't aware, the best time to perform a burn with Kerbal, not with Kerbal Engineer, with maneuver nodes, is to uh, take the time required for the burn, to so say it's two minutes, uh, cut that time in half, so in our example that will be one minute and then you basically burn, start burning when you're that far away from the maneuver node. So if the maneuver node required a two minute burn, we would start burning around one minute prior to reaching this maneuver node. Now in reality you probably actually want to start burning a little bit before this because your craft is going to change weight as you start burning but I don't like getting bogged down in that. So we are doing a sort of meh suicide burn. I tend to do suicide burns just by trial and error and using F9 and F5 to quick save and quick load but here we got it right first time so I was pretty chuffed and there's the uh, rover being deployed there. I've kind of skipped through most of the surface stuff because I don't think it's particularly interesting to watch. Um, if you are if you do want to watch a bit more a few more clips of our surface mis surface antics <laughs> then you can watch the music video of this. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, Matt, you prominent orbital absurdity, you don't have enough Delta V there to get off the man and back to Kerbin. And I'm glad you asked or pointed that out, random viewer. You see, we actually have some fuel left in the wings and some of the peripheral tanks that aren't in the main fuselage or the two sort of cylinders either side of it that are connected with fuel tanks. So if we just pump fuel into the central tanks, uh, you can see our Delta, 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 Delta V, Delta V was the... Yeah, I probably should cut that out. Uh, is rising, and we have enough fuel now. Well, we had enough fuel anyway, but now our actual official Kerbal Engineer readouts are showing enough Delta V to get back. That was a uh, terribly uh, incoherent ramble, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, but here's just a quick reveal of where that monopropellant en engine is that will help us get off the ground and ultimately leave the mud. So we're going to fire up. Uh, disable our brakes. Make sure you're pointing 90 degrees because that's obviously where the direction the MUN rotates and so that will give us a little bit of extra delta V. So we're just going to tap. Uh, in this case we're tapping zero which is the action group I bound to toggle the monopropellant engine. So if you downloaded this craft file that's um, that's what you do. So the craft file is in the description as always. And there we go. So on the MUN you really want to try and fly as flat as possible. Here we actually have to pitch up a bit to avoid that ridge. But uh, because there's an atmosphere, you really want to invest as much of your delta V as you can into just building up speed. So we don't want to be pointing uh, upward too steeply because then we're wasting fuel, sort of fighting gravity rather than just building up orbital speed. And then we're going to make a maneuver node to uh, exit. So you want to make sure your escape point is directly backwards along the MUN's orbit or as close as possible to it because that will make sure that our orbit around Kerbin is as low as it can possibly be. So here we are, yeah, so you've got 47 second burn, so we want to start burning around 25 seconds before the maneuver node is reached. But there we are, and um, there we go, we've got a pretty low curb in orbit, and obviously we have quite a bit of Delta V left, uh, we have about 800 to play around with, but um, that's not nearly enough to lower our orbit, well we don't, we don't have enough basically to get a low curb in orbit, so we can use the atmosphere to help slow ourselves down. So we're going to just point ourselves retrograde and we're going to be aiming for a periapsis of around 50,000 is what I tend to aim for for the MUN uh, just because that won't give us an error break that's too aggressive and ultimately lower our, lower our apoapsis into the atmosphere but it's also um, high enough so that we won't sort of have any overheating issues. And here we go. So yeah, you see we had to little, just tweak it a little bit there, but there we go. Now you can start to see uh, this uh, SSTO's biggest weakness really in that it really wants to enter a flat spin uh, when the fuel tanks are approaching empty. So uh, it doesn't end up proving problematic for me, but those who are new to flying space planes may struggle here. Uh, the way you combat this is because we have some uh, liquid fuel left over uh, what we can do is just fire the rapiers in air breathing mode when we're close to the surface and pick up some speed and flatten ourselves out and that will, ex that will take us out of the stall basically and so it's not really a problem but like I say if you're not that familiar with flying space planes this might not be the best thing for you so either you could fit some canards to the front of the plane or you could take a look at my space planes that are designed for beginners so just going to plug my Minmus SSTO tutorial again that won't enter a flat spin when you re-enter so that could be more suitable for you if you are struggling here. So this is our third and final air break here 
And there we go. If you saw my, in fact, my Apple apps, this is actually a little bit within the atmosphere, but a quick burn with the nukes uh, raises it to 74, which is fine. Then we can just do a quick 18.7 delta meters per second of delta V required to get our periapsis into orbit. And then we can focus ourselves on landing at the space center. Now, if you're not on an equatorial orbit, I do cover how to land at the space center when we're on a pretty much 45 degree angle orbit. So. In this case, I was quite fortunate in that we've got a pretty much spot on equatorial orbit. So I tend to line up our trajectory kind of east of that uh, peninsula that's to the east of the Kerbin Space Center, Kerbal Space Center even. And then we're just going to flatten ourselves out, make sure we've activated all our elevators. And I'm actually pumping fuel backwards here to try and shift our center of mass as far back as we can. And some of you might be wondering, why are you doing that? Because that just makes everything more imbalanced. And you are correct. And I'm not sure what I was thinking at the time. I think I just got confused, but it doesn't matter. Uh, if anything, I'm just proving here that it can be saved even when it's made even more unstable. So there we are, just pointing ourselves down to pick up as much speed as possible. The reason planes stall is because they're going too slowly and that's kind of, you know, they, they lose stability. So we're just going to accelerate here towards the Kerbal Space Center. And then we can just shut off our engines when we're on a nice smooth trajectory. And the way we're going to avoid a stall again is to make sure our speed doesn't get too low and not try and make any sort of sudden movement with the craft. So we want to keep our movement slow and smooth. As you can see we've actually activated fine controls by pressing caps lock. See how in the bottom left hand corner those gauges have blue arrows rather than red ones. Uh, you press caps lock to toggle that and it just makes the sort of control inputs less sudden I think is the word I'm looking for but there we go that's it I hope you enjoyed this video uh, there will be a link on screen um, at the end of this video for the music video version uh, which I'm especially proud of very proud of that actually I'd highly recommend you watching that uh, I'll probably end up making it public eventually it's unlisted at the moment but uh, I wanted to try and promote this commentary one first because like I say the music video is not available to everyone whereas this one is and some of you have said that you prefer commentaries so you know there we go. But thank you for watching. Follow me on Twitter uh, at Matt Lown, at under Matt underscore Lown, even. Yes, that's it.